This podcast is brought to you by Mapper Forward's new Patreon community, the Global Coffee Think Tank. Check the show notes or head to patreon.com forward slash Mapper Forward to find out how you can become a member today. Danielle, welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Map It Forward. Thank you for coming on the show for the first time. That's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. Um, you are actually you tell everybody what you do. Um, my my job, my my work, my um, what I do, and takes up most of my brain power at the moment. Is uh, I got. Just a little uh, coffee bar. Uh, we roast coffee uh, called Artifla Coffee. Um, we've got, we've had a main shop for about seven ish years now mm-hmm. where we only serve coffee. Um, we've never had tea or, we literally only have coffee. There's no food, there's no pastries. Um, yeah, uh, my business partner, Shoji Sasa. Uh, and I, we kind of had done lots of stuff in copy that it had to offer. Um, and we were, our tips that was born out of, uh, we just want to do what we want to do. Um, when we're not the best at all these things, but we really enjoy them and we really enjoy selecting coffees. We enjoy, both enjoy roasting. We both enjoy making it and serving it to people. Um, our tips was born out of that and with only two of us. There wasn't really a headspace to have croissants <laughs> um, because if we had croissants, that would be average and brought in from somewhere else and they'd get left outside before we got there and they'd get eaten by magpies or rats or whatever. Another thing that is taking up a little bit of space that we only had this much capacity. So yeah. we just kept it simple. Um, going back to actually specializing in something rather than being... Um, you know, a supermarket for people's stomachs. How long have you been in the industry? 50 minutes. I think I started, I started getting, I've always had an interesting coffee. I started mucking around with stuff as a home barista Mm -hmm. um, back in maybe 07, 06, 07, end of 06. Um, And it actually became out of, I I think I was going through a rough time um, Uh in life in general. Uh-huh. And I needed to, to focus some, on something else. Uh, coffee became it. I don't remember choosing it. It just happened. Um, and I just went just deep dove on it and nerded out about everything and pretended that I knew heaps more about stuff on forums than I really did. <laughs> and that my experience, you know, um, oh, the lack of experience I had. And, you know, you, you, you put out a persona online that, you know, you know heaps of crap and you yeah you actually have the scope of about this much half of you know uh-huh. um but that's sort of online i think in general um and uh yeah so that was back then so whatever so 15 yeah 14 yeah I, I don't even know um yeah about we came we came up in the industry together and uh it's certainly changed a lot since we were what i call puppy baristas in in the in the industry and I want to have a series of kind of podcast episodes with you where we kind of explore the world back then in coffee compared to the world now and business ownership and, and what it was like and how the specialty coffee world really has changed. For some context for anyone who's listening, Artifisa uh, was one of the very first cafes in Sydney that only served coffee. In fact, it could have been the first. There was Artifisa and Gumption, right? Yeah, I think, yeah, Coffee Alchemy, Gumption, like Hazel did, was, was doing that a long yeah. time for a while. Like when I started, I the first time I ever cupped was in the back of her warehouse. Alchemy um, Coffee. Before she had a before she mm. had a coffee, before she was serving coffee, she was just roasting coffee uh-huh. for other people and um, cupped out the back blew my mind that was the first time I tasted more than two coffees side by side and I still remember it It was I think it was like I think it was one of the first Ethiopian naturals I ever had it was a a Colombian a Brazil and maybe a Honduras but it was I just remember doing it there was four coffees and I was like ah coffee tastes different that's exciting yeah (laughs) let's go um yeah, but I think pretty much as far as people who are 
roasting, selecting, roasting and brewing their own and only mm-hmm. doing coffee. I, even since we opened like seven odd years ago, I, I actually don't even know if there's too many others that are, that are, that aren't like big that have yeah. just opened a little coffee right. bar that are doing it. Like the stayed small and just, that said, I, this is how we opened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we I had remember. No yeah, no I, re- idea. I remember having a conversation with you back then. I'm like, Dan, you're really going to just serve coffee? And you're like, hey, we have no idea if this is going to work. Yeah. <laughs> we don't, we're going to try it for six months. You remember you said that? <laughs> we still feel like we're getting away with it. Like when people ask how's the shop going, I'm like, yeah, we're still getting away with it. Well, the, the same thing happened with Salvage though, didn't it? That was the business that you had before yeah. that. That was like, well, funny be- tell that story. That's yeah. fantastic. Because, I mean, we were working, the three of us were working at a space called Air Coffee in Castle Hill out there, uh-huh. uh, doing contract roasting for a lot of other people. Um, we'd set up a cafe there. Um, I think that was my first taste of um, setting up a space, mm-hmm. like a, a retail space. Um, you know, I think, you know, got to make a lot of mistakes with that I'd didn't necessarily have to carry um, but uh <laughs> you know you make all those make mistakes with someone else's money it, that said it was like pretty cool space and everything but mm-hmm. um it was most the first time I had a space that I was sort of overseeing parts of it yeah but I didn't have full control but it was beautiful I, think, I remember it was yeah, very it was, different it was gorgeous yeah it was cool um but then salvage so we'd kind of stuff kind of fell apart there and you know it's there's not much left of what air coffee was now, um, but uh, which happens. Um, and salvage was a uh, we were we used to have ramen at this place in our town and you know train station in this little courtyard for years before. And there's this space across the courtyard, tiny, a cafe that seemingly never was never open. Um, mm-hmm. And it was like we were there, I think, eating ramen after we sort of half had one foot out the door. And it's like, that place is for lease. Do you want to, like, let's just call up, see how much it is. Call that with it. Okay. And we were literally like, okay, that's 60 coffees and 14 toasties we have to make to break even a day. We could do that. And we were literally we? like, let's just do it. And we were literally like, let's do it for six months. If it works, cool. If not, we sell it. Like, we went in pretty blind. We put in $9,000 each. Nine mm-hmm. of that went to a bond. So we built the whole joint ourselves out of stuff from Bunnings and literally wood we found on the side of the road became a bar. Um, stuff we had around, grinders. We asked uh, Paul at Mecca if they had any dying machines around. They gave us a machi- the X machine from King Street, wow. which I think he was like. It was just sitting there and it was a dog. It was beautiful. It was a mistral, but it uh-huh. was a dog. Like nothing, the volumetrics were off. Nothing, it was all over the place, but we were like, we can work with that. We can do this? How hard can it be, uh, right? (laughs) Yeah, so we opened basically for (laughs) $18,000. And we, there was a board and we just, I just wrote, look, this is our names, this is who we are, this is what we want to do. If you like it, we like nice things. If you, and that's what we're going to serve. And if you like them, that's cool. Um, not going to force it into you, but you know, and then anyway, so we, we opened on the 26th of January on a public holiday. Don't know why. So we <laughs> built it, I think in six weeks. And then, um, I think I remember being in there on Christmas day, painting the floor, um, <laughs> in the morning before <laughs> going to Christmas breakfast. Wow. Um, and we opened and there was like, Half of it, our Tarman was there and heaps of coffee nerds rocked up. And I was like, yeah. why? Are you here? And we just didn't know there was, we knew there was a bit of a gap in the thing. We didn't know how big a gap in the market. And there was no cafes in that courtyard. Mm. Um, when we sold it, when I sold it a few years ago, like three years, years maybe more, you, um, there was one, two, three, four places serving coffee within that courtyard. And there was wow. none for the first few years. Um, so it was super fun. Super hard work, exhausted all the time, but super rewarding because it was just literally our hard work being 
I guess, like blooming from that. Yeah, um, immediate then, results. From day one, yeah. you guys crushed. It was weird having people come from south of the bridge to come and have coffee. Yeah, which I was one like, of them. Which we're like, why, why? You've got so much great coffee over that side. Um, I guess we had pretty low, we set a pretty low bar on um, expectations, um, which generally I, I think I, I like live my life generally. I set yeah. a pretty low bar. I'd rather be, I'd rather, you know, undersell and over deliver. Yeah. Oh, so than, one of you, know, one of you I, was, re- sorry, go ahead. Yeah, rather than overhype something and then just mm. let it run down. Yeah. Because <laughs> one that. of... One of you was responsible for coffee, one responsible for food, and the other was responsible. Oh, we, we, we could actually all do everything. Yeah. But we sort of just, like, spread out. So I think I was making coffee. Toby was in the kitchen a lot. Um, Matt was doing both um, okay. most of the time. And, you know, it's just the three of us and one other mate. And we, yeah, it started as something simple. And then as other places opened up to round up, it forced us to evolve and change yeah still doing good stuff it probably wasn't what we set out to do and it was way more work for way less margin <laughs> which is why we got rid of it in the end I, I, when you look at artificer and you look at uh at salvage today would you open either of those businesses um so artificer salvage salvage was was interesting because it was Okay, we know the formula. Mm. We thought we knew the formula. We did because I think it worked. Um, yeah. Even Would building it... the space, we were like, at this time in time in not just cafe fit outs, but um, cafe fit outs on the north side. Mm. Um, the whole like recycled everything, industrial everything was sort of something that, I don't know. It, I mean, we look at now and like everything is that. But right. the north side always took a little bit longer to catch up to stuff. Mm. And we knew, because most of the time was spent on the south side of the hub ridge and the city, so blah, blah. And so even literally building it, we were laughing going, I don't even like this fit out, but it's going to work. <laughs> so there were lots of things that we mm. just knew. We knew the formula to make a successful cafe in that time for that space. The position of being a train station, on one side was a yep. whole lot of clientele that were a younger, young families, um, you know, d- high density living. On this side of the tracks, old money, old people, high disposable income, and we're at this meeting point of the station where there's a lot of foot. It had, it was all it had all the things that were it like ticked all the boxes. Traditionally, there's there's a lot of fallbacks, I guess. Mm. Um, yeah, salvage. I, I would personally, I wouldn't do again. Because I don't want to work that hard, and don't, now that I've <laughs> done the space without food, I don't want to have to do it ever again. Because right. um, it's way easier with that. But you know, it was it was cool. Um, I think uh, again, it was a timing thing. I've been watching that space for years, um, and uh, it just happened to come up again. Like Shoji was looking for a space to open a cafe. I was helping him find one for him. Mm-hmm. We weren't even planning to work together. And then he was like, uh, hey, that space you've been looking at is um, uh, up for lease. Do you want to check it out? And we're like, yeah, sure. And I went and checked it out. And I still remember um, a few guys from Small Batch uh, down in Melbourne who just happened to be walking past on Burke Street mm-hmm. randomly. And we ran into them and they were like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, this is a cool space. We're like, yeah, we know. <laughs> anyway, we hadn't even we hadn't even thought about doing anything. I was I I saw her, I was like, oh, this is great for what I would want to do. I just want to do coffee. It's not too big where the expectation is more than just coffee. So mm. um positionally where it is, I didn't want to be on Crown Street, like the major street, um, where there was lots of foot traffic and people just walk in and expect there to be bacon egg rolls and breakfast burritos, which we just weren't gonna do. Mm. Um but we're close enough to the action on Burke Street. Um, so it was still a little bit destination-y, uh, mm-hmm. which, you know, if people were searching out for coffee, they would walk that extra 50 metres away out of their main Crown Street route. Um, that even the aspect that it faced northeast, um, there was a bike lane there. There was a lot, again, it was like 
ticking a whole lot of boxes. Yeah. Um, and uh, anyway, there was a and there was a pub like a you know 50, 40 meters down the road. And great um, Japanese so we food, had if I food, remember. Which is gone now, sadly. Oh no. Uh, it was excellent. Um, but we, anyway, so we went and had a, had a beer at the pub. Uh-huh. And then um, he showed you, he was like, oh, what do you think of it? I'm like, cool. That's what I would, this is what I would do in that space. He's like, cool. Do you want to do it together? And I was like, yeah. So we did. That's literally how it happened. Of so course. We just did it. <laughs> but we had think- a whole lot of fallbacks as well, you know. The, the biggest of which was, how do we get this roasting machine through the door? <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Um, it literally, literally scraped the paint yeah. off going through there. Um, which is funny, that roaster, we didn't even use it. So it sat there for ages. Oh, no. We never used it because we, um, we've we got a bit of a crazy landlord and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the whole situation, that roaster's there. Anyway, so we were going to then upgrade it and change it. Um mm. The yeah, and so we sold that roaster actually to a friend, you know, Sebastian, um, Seb, yeah, he yeah, used yeah, to work yeah. At Mega, yeah, yeah, and he's a real estate agent now, I think. Um, but uh, he, he bought it, wow, and that, that was, and then COVID hit, and instead Ouch. of like, ah, oh, we sh- let's not buy that new roaster yet, like mm-hmm. we were gonna maybe look at a lowering, it was a bit more, um, neighborhood friendly. Mm-hmm. Um, where we are and uh, we were like uh, let's hang on to the money from that roaster just in case because we don't know what's going to happen bet um, that was the smartest decision you made in the last couple of years yeah it was it was a good one um, but yeah and we still haven't got a roaster so we're using the share roasting space at the moment uh, our um, friends at Echo right yeah that's yep. it which so- worked really well for us and it does for a lot of businesses that are that are kind of in that space right now of like a little bit of limbo. You know, co-resting mm. facilities I think are going to be what ties a lot of businesses over until we do get to some new normal as we're like yeah. hours away from the next world war and who knows what's going to happen. And who else knows what's next, you know. <laughs> By the time um, this, air, this airs, we may literally be in war, in war but who, who knows? Who knows? Who, who knows? knows? But, uh, yeah, that space is great. It is a good space for, for I mean, it's, it filled the gap for us with what we needed uh-huh. and is also great for startups, you know. A, a sort of space where information is flying around for people who don't know how to roast yeah. and want to get into it. Um, and it's great, you know, it's great for that. And it's it the person who's running it is a real leader. Noah Adra is, and, you know, in coming episodes, you and I are going to talk about leadership and uh, yeah. and what that looks like these days versus pre-pandemic. But a business like Eker needs somebody who has real intentionality for the future of bringing community together and helping to facilitate the way that businesses can better themselves and their position through the different offerings at a co-hosting facility. And I think he does an exceptional job of that. Yeah, I think, I don't know if it was intentional or not to make it, uh, I mean, it was, it's a business yep. and, and by nature of it, it is, then by by having lots of people come and use a, a, mm. a shared facility, it then just became a community space. Yeah. Which I don't, I don't know if that was an intentional part, but it yeah, just, it was. by nature of it became a communal space, right? Yeah. Um, where information is shared and I, he's really nurtured that. Um, yeah, he like intentionally he did. He, he yeah. When he set out the it business. Or, yeah, because we when – I started Elixir and he started, it was called CRS then. He and I were actually working together at Harry's. Right, uh, that's right. Together. And, uh, you know, he would, he and I would talk about what our, you know, how we're going to start our businesses and what it was going to, we'd both started. And and he said, I want this to be a place that fosters community. I want people not to be scared to swap information and to encourage each other. And then years later, I said to him, did it work? And he went, yeah, sort of. You know, people it, because coffee people are coffee people. They 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 want to have community, but they're scared that they're the only ones that want to have community. 
you know. So he's done his best, I think, but the pandemic has definitely influenced the way that I think everybody looks at the idea of community. Oh, yeah, big time. Big right? Time. Yeah. And yeah. maybe we'll talk about that in the next episode. So uh, sure. let's do it. Peace, love, and peanut butter, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks, friends. If you enjoyed this video, here's what you should check out next. Consider supporting Mapper Forward on Patreon and be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell before you leave.